there will be some lessons and some videos because some parts of your project you will not be able to do if you don't understand it. So the project is, let's do this. Oh, we got to roll first. Let's roll first. Roll. The class. Let's roll for the class. Oh, I made the uh, randomizer. Let's open up the randomizer. I thought, what are you doing? Shh. Okay, so these are the available companies right here. Ace. Okay, so we're going to randomize them. Oh, Asus. And, oh, and. Did I start recording? I did. Okay. So here's the way it's going to work after the randomization is done. Number one will be table number one, number two will be table number two, number three will be table number three, and the other two will not be done. So, you've got ECS as your company. Yes. Write it down. Write You'll forget. ECS subsidy is PC chips, so you can use motherboards from either ECS or PC chips. <laughs> Write it down. ECS or PC chips. ECS. ECS or PC chips, which is a subsidy of it. This is you guys have Asus. Yes, I love Asus. Or AS Rock, which actually used to be a subsidy, but it's kind of a spin-off now. It's his own company, but we're still grouping that. those two together. ASUS. Okay, you got Asus <coughs> or AS Rock. Okay, those are your two companies. AS Rock, up to I think two years ago, was part of ASUS. And it's ASUS because it comes from Pegasus. Pegasus, but Pegasus. they don't call it ASUS. <laughs> okay, so and you guys have Gigabyte. Gigabyte. Boo. Boo. Okay, so no one's doing Biostar or MSI, which are two of the other I biggest companies. Okay. okay, so those are the companies that you have. So let's talk about. The project and that's why itself. Mr. Winter Egg hates you. And that's why Winter Egg hates you. Okay. And you won't get into the Air Force. I'm going to read this to you so that you know you've been read once, but you guys can open this up at any time and read it again. Presentation cool. begin on scheduled date, continue until all presentations are complete. You have to have yourself ready for the first day. That doesn't mean you can't keep making changes. We roll to see who starts. Okay? So we roll Cody. Mm -hmm. He's first. And when we debrief Cody and say, Cody, you should have done this and this and this, and Casey goes, oh, I forgot that myself, can Casey make changes on hers before she presents? Yes. yes. Okay? But you still have to have it done by the due date. Okay? All presentations will be uploaded into Moodle each day. As you guys are working on next week, when you're done, upload. When you're done, upload. When you're done, upload. When you're done, upload. You guys do projects before you upload. Every day? Every day. All day. Every, every, every class day. Every, every class day. I'm sorry. Not every day. Okay? So here's the thing. Always change the name of your presentation before uploading. Do not call it PowerPoint and then save it as PowerPoint, upload it as PowerPoint, and then day two, save it as PowerPoint, upload it as PowerPoint, and then day three, save it as PowerPoint, upload it as PowerPoint. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm going to be the person that does that. Okay. Here's why. Because Moodle, if you don't change the name, may not change the file that you upload. Because it sees, oh, they've already got PowerPoint uploaded. It was already 3K. I don't need you. Okay? Sometimes it doesn't, if you change the name, it always works, and you always see that the current one's up there. So always change the name and upload a new name. You can name it PowerPoint 1, the 2, the 3, the, I don't care what the name is. You know, you can make it Melikaliki Maka, and then White Christmas, yeah. and then it's I love Bing. Whatever you want, just change it every day. Okay? Are you a Binger? Do I like Bing Crosby? We will be listening to Bing Crosby at Christmas time. <laughs> Okay, so you may use Google Docs or Prezi, and here's the thing, down at the bottom of this, down at the bottom of this, you have two options down here, pay attention, pay attention, you may upload a file right here, Really? or if you're using Prezi or Google Docs, you go into the notes, and you click edit, and you submit a link to your Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Anybody here going to do Google Docs? I'm no. going to cover it anyway. I'm going to cover no, it anyway as if you were. Because yeah. here, here is a problem that students do all the time. I want to make sure you guys all know how to do this correctly. So I've got this PowerPoint on my Google Drive. Let's see a PowerPoint. No, you don't. Anybody see a PowerPoint? Right there. There's a PowerPoint. Okay. So I've got this PowerPoint that I'm working on that I want to share. I want to give Mr. Poole. You can't just copy this. I will not be able to see it. Okay, what you have to do is you have to click share, 
And then you change this right here to what I've got. Anyone with the link can see it. You could make it public if you want to. Then well, people can search it and see it. But if you say anyone who has the link and then say save, then this is the link. Okay, so you'll copy this up here and you go back over here and you, and you go back over here and then over here. Okay, and then you'll give me the link in there and you'll say save, okay? So I either need the link. Oh, I want the link to be a link. So hold on. So paste your link, then highlight your link. And then link your link. See the link right there? Yeah. That's the link. You link your link. See how many times so you So I'm going to put your link in for your link. Then I'm going to say OK. And now when you save, your link's the link. The link. I'm and so say that when I click and on the link, the link save. takes me to the new the link. link. And I get to see Oh, God. And now I can go save Princess Silva. <laughs> <laughs> OK, everybody got that? You have to share it. So you have cool. to say it's shared to anyone with the link. And you have to give me that link. Everybody got that? If you do Prezi, wait, wait. you have to share. I'm not going to show you Prezi. If you use Prezi, you have to share Prezi and give me the link to the right yeah, thing. The, the, the link. The link. Okay, so, awesome. so let's go over what the project is. You are a salesman or saleswoman for a company X. ECS, PC Chips, Aces, Aces Rocks, or Gigabyte, okay? And you're selling products for a specific CPU type. Okay, so Nico, Joel King, what was your name again? Simpson. Simpson. Has Intel sockets. So that means LGA is what you're selling for, okay? And you guys have AMD, okay? Right? Does Nico have AMD? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that's the socket type you're selling for. LGA, bleh, whatever the number you find, or AMD sockets, which are AM, bleh, okay? AM, bleh. Oh, I should write You're selling us, by the words, for three different uses. Number one is a home PC. You're looking for the least expensive option. And down here are the specifics on what that means, okay? So I'm going to go down here. What? Not bleh. Blanc. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so... Home PC, least expensive options for a low-end system, has to have integrated components. In other words, it's going to have integrated audio, video, and LAN. Why? So that they don't have to buy other stuff. So they don't have to buy it, because if I can make a cheap one, it's all going to be included. It's all okay? going to be cheap. And all the be average included. person is not okay? going to Cheap, thing. cheap, cheap. Least expensive motherboard you can find. Everybody listening? No. It cannot be used. I'm it cannot so be refurbished. Big. It must be new. Every year somebody takes us to a site and then and we click on it and it says refurbished. I'm like, no, use so bad. Okay, it's got to be a new motherboard that's available somewhere online for new. Okay? So the cheapest one you can find. Some of you are gonna find one in the twenty dollar range, some of you are gonna find the cheapest one in the fifty dollar range. Okay? So that's option number one you're gonna present. Option number two is a business PC, which is a mid-range PC with good performance. And what does that mean? We're going to go down here. And this is all on this, so you can look it up. So the business motherboard has to have a fast network card, okay? Because it's a business. They want to get their stuff fast, okay? It has to have SATA drives. And we're going to look at the connectors here in a little bit, because you guys need to understand the connectors. Everyone's here! Everyone's here! Okay, um, I have some connectivity oh. issues. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was right at the time when Matt, oh, you have connectivity issues? What do you yeah. mean? What do you mean? I get like that one time when I was getting on, like Stop. two, three people, but it won't load web pages. Uh, so. Pay attention. I know okay. how I feel. So the home PC has got to have good hard drive connector. Okay, there's two kinds of hard drive connectors. You should be writing this down. There are two kinds of hard drive There's SATA and there's PATA, which is also called IDE. Yes, but I'm telling you stuff that isn't written here. Oh, you're okay. You should start okay. over. Okay, so I'm not starting over. <laughs> While you're recording. So um, SATA hard drives are the faster, newer drives. I'm recording. The faster newer drives. I know, I said I'll take questions at the end. Yes. Faster newer drives you have to have for your mother or for your uh, business one. It has to be able to take four gig of RAM. Hey. Yeah. Um, Everyone's here. Two things for you. 
Yes. Uh, Rotifer's uh, computer is not accepting uh, a file, um, uh, an executable yeah, one for uh, Flash. I mean, it's going through and it's running about halfway totally through, but it, it keeps coming up with an error. Okay, I, I will call you back. I have a really short block today, and, and I'm in the middle of a lecture. I will call you back when I'm done. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Okay, so it's got to take 4 gig of RAM. 4 gig? 4 gig of RAM. And it's got to have integrated audio and video. It has to. It has to. Now, I'm going to say something about this has to means most desired in this case because at least one of you are going to get to one where you found one with the integrated audio video and LAN because it's a high-end motherboard manufacturer and you couldn't find a second one because these can't be the same one you can't go oh this one fits this and this nope you got to give us three different motherboards okay so if you can't find one then you have to give us a video card to go with it so if you go and say I only have one that's integrated audio from gigabit, byte, whatever. Then, then your second one, you have to not only give us the motherboard, you have to also say, but we're going to give you this add-on video card for $19.99, and here's where you find that. Okay. So if you can't find this, you have to give us the component too. All of them will have audio. Okay. And then the last one's a high-end gaming PC. It has to have two high-end SATA drives, connectors. Okay. It has to have gigabit network card just like this one. It has to have two, two, two PCI E ports for high end video cards. Okay? It has to take four gig of memory or more, and it has to have six channel audio. It's going to say on the audio, three channel audio, that's the crappy, but we got on the back. This one, okay? Six channel audio, you see a bunch of plugs on the audio. Okay? Okay, so it has to have at least six channel. They have more than that, okay? In other words, it's got to have good sound on it. Okay, so let's go back up to the top and finish talking. So I got those three kinds of PCs. What do we have to present? And I'm going to give you an example presentation here. And then, by the way, if we don't get everything done, I'm going to do. I'm going to videotape it so you can watch you it on the example presentation a couple classes ago. Not on a motherboard. I gave you one on a power supply. Okay. So you've got to give me a history and background of your company. Company BIOS has been in existence since, since 1975, and we're the maker of five billion. Did Miss Bonds give you a donut this morning? No. We're pretty sure okay. Shh. I wish I had a donut. So you have to tell me where the headquarters is. Where the headquarters is. How big they are. Okay. How many motherboards they make a year? Some of these things you won't be able to find. If you've got a smallish company that doesn't want to say how big they are, they may not have something that you can find out how many motherboards they make a year. Your objective is to get this information. Casey, short class. Stop talking. How long they've been making motherboards, you definitely should be able to find that. So you're going to have to go to the company website and read the company history or the company syllabus. Or go to Wikipedia. This requires some research. Okay. Oh. By day one, this should be done. Okay. By the end of Tuesday, all that should be done, and you should have at least one motherboard done. Okay. Oh God. So introduction to your topic. Okay. Show us what you're going to present us. Why did we ask you here? And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Just leave it on the ground. We don't have class. Wait. Okay. Yes, we do. We don't have class on Monday. Tuesday, sorry. Whatever. The beginning Tuesday. of the next class. I thought he said Monday and then Tuesday. No, he said Tuesday. Yeah, Monday. Monday. Okay. Was said. You have to tell us these kind of things about each motherboard. Bus speed. Bus speed. How fast information goes around the motherboard. Go bus. Okay. What components are integrated with it? It's always on this sheet. We're going to look at some. Okay. So what things? How many USB it has? Does it have FireWire? Does it have PS2 plugs for your mouse and your keyboard? Does it have integrated video? Did, what kind of audio does it have? All those things that come with the motherboard, that's important. Okay? I need to know what connects up to this. Okay? So I need to know it's got three channel audio, it's got four USBs, an integrated network card, it's got integrated video, it's got two PS2 ports. I've got a serial port and a parallel port on, on board. I've got two, one, two. IDE connectors and four SATA connectors on this one. Okay, meaning I've got two two spots for hard drives. Uh, IDE, these are the older hard drives up here, and I've got four spots for the newer hard drives. In this one. Okay, is this an okay motherboard? If it worked, yes. Obviously, it doesn't work. I wouldn't hold up my hand like this. But 
Actually, I don't know. In my work. But um, anyway, so you got to tell me, and how many expansion slots are what kind? I've got two PCI, one extended X16 PCI, and one P extended PCI one slot. Okay. Define any terms that you use. If you use things like megahertz, processing speed, cache, socket, socket type, CPU voltage, you say something, you should explain what you're talking about. It doesn't have to be on the slide. You can say it in words. You can have notes to make sure you say it. You can have a little note down at the bottom of the page that just has it in smaller print, as long as we know that you know what those things are. You need to tell us the advantages, disadvantages of yours. Why should we buy your product? Okay. You're a sales rep, you should be telling us why we should buy yours. Okay, we have to define costs, and they have to have a link that you're going to click on to take you to the website. And just like I showed you on the power supply one, you might want to take a screen capture just in case it changes. Okay, a summary of the whole thing. So when you're done with all three slides, you can say, hey, bio, you can see Biostar is a great thing. My home one's only $19. My Business one's only $22, and my gamer one is $69.99. We've been around for 20 years and warranty our products. Give us some kind of why you're great. Okay? And you have to finish with the works cited that's in MLA format. You have to have a slide that says works cited and has each one of the bullets in MLA format. Okay. Uh, general guidelines. You may know a lot about your subject, but the class know very little about your company. He may know about her company, but you guys don't. You guys don't. Okay. Make your presentation, just like I said last time, easy to read, understand, don't make a font that we can't see. Okay. Handouts are optional, don't ever have to do handouts, but extra credit if done well, if done well. Now what's a okay. ha handout? If you made a Biostar handout, okay, a little trifold Biostar handout, if you wanted to, that had uh -huh. all three of your motherboards in there with a little history of Biostar. That was like something you came when you went to sell us. Okay, a handout is just that something you hand out to all of us. Yes, yes. ma'am. Wow. PowerPoint Ooh. requirements. In addition to the above listed, you have to have a design template. You have to have custom animation. You have to have slide transitions. A work slide and a question slide at the end. Question. Transitions takes a fifth of a second. Because you're Casey. Apply okay. slide transition. Apply to all slides. Why? All you have to do is like exactly you can press design. random they animations. Just, they just frustrate me. And they all become random. Okay, I this would is do Casey, right. ladies and gentlemen. I would do right. Me. Stop picking on Casey. Yes. Okay, so that is the overall project. I'm going to show you an example one, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff. Okay, so, and, and this example one is on here for you guys to look at. I'm not saying that this is a 100%. This is one I took from another student just to give you an idea. I think I changed it a little bit to improve it. Okay. Now this is not one you guys can do because the company is Intel Corporation, okay? So, hi, I'm from Intel Corporation. My name is Jim Herpelman, and I'm here to present LGA 775 socket options. I used to give the socket. I don't give the socket anymore. Now I'm just saying. Intel based sockets. So these are LGA sockets, 775 sockets. Why am I here? I'll be presenting best option for the home, office, and gaming motherboard for you guys. A little information on Intel. I am talking fast on purpose. We launched in 1968. CEO is Paul Atelini. That's as good as I can do. We have over 95,000 employees with uh, 450 silicon products and platforms available that we put out. We have plants all over the world in China, Vietnam, US, UK, and Israel. There's our headquarters is right there. Uh, well, and I, w I should have had one showing those plants that I just went to, but I didn't have another picture, I guess. Okay, so that's a little bit about Intel. Didn't tell you everything that was on the thing. I think he lost points for this. Okay, so the first motherboard I want to show you is our home motherboard option. It's the Intel DG33FBC motherboard. There's a little picture of it. You can see it's got an LGA775 socket right there. A little bit about it, the LGA775 socket. This socket is compatible with all Pentium dual cores, Pentium Celeron D4 series processors, Intel Core 2 Quad, and Intel Core 2 Duo processors. Okay, you guys have to tell us what this works with. Okay, that's one of the things. Okay, so not just that it has an LGA 775 socket, but what processors are you or am I going to be able to put in this sucker? Okay, and there's there's the processors that work with this. Okay? As far as memory, 
There are four DDR2 slots, and they'll each take two gig max for a maximum of four gigabytes of RAM total in this motherboard. I'm sorry, eight gigabytes, they say four. Integrate components on the back side, and I don't have a picture of it, should have. I would have a backside picture here if there was one available. I've got two PS2 slots for my keyboard and mouse. I've got one Firewire port. I've got a network port right here. It's an RJ45, does 10, 100, 1000, or one gigabit. Uh, I've got a VGA standard video port here. There is a mic, headphone, and line-in port for my audio. And I've got six backside USB ports as well integrated on this motherboard. As far as expansion slots, you can see here, I've got, and this is wrong by the way, doesn't match the picture, I didn't do this, okay. He says you got four PCI Express slots and four PCI slots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I automatically know that doesn't add up. Okay, so what does he have? He has three standard PCI slots, on this one. Okay. And, and he has one, two, three PCI Express one, and one PCI Express 8 or 16, I don't know, they look the same. Probably a 16. The PCI Express 16 is the slot that the video card goes. Okay, these are PCI Express 1. There's a little bit longer one that's a PCI Express 4. I've got that to show you today. And these are standard PCIs. So this was wrong. This is what the student presented, and it was immediately obvious to every single person that those didn't add up. Okay, so just so you know, that should probably match the picture that you're giving us. Okay, drive connectors. I've got one IDE connector that's right here. Okay, that's an older parallel ATA connector. And I've got four SATA connectors. Those are right here. One, two, three, four. They have little L mark. If you look at them, see the little L bracket things there. That's what the newer SATA hard drive, this is what this connector looks like. And it just plugs the right way, plugs right in and connects up to the hard drive. That is the better, newer connector. And the IDE connector is that ribbon cable that are in those boxes right here. This is IDE. Those are older, slower. They transfer data at, at actually now about a quarter of the speed. So the picture, by the way, that's a floppy connector right there. He didn't mention that. He should have. He has a floppy connector, he should have mentioned there's a floppy connector. So he really has a floppy connector, an IDE or parallel ATA connector, and four SATA. That's wrong. Okay? They're either SATA or PATA, and he didn't put it. They're all ATA. Maybe Okay, I'm just pointing that out. Okay, so other information it does hyper threading. The front side bus runs at 800 megahertz. The north bridge. This was not required, but you guys have that information, so why not put it on there? The north bridge is Intel G33 Express. It's got six channel audio. The auto chipset was a Realtek ALC888. The video chipset was an Intel. Blah, this is just extra information. It's Microsoft Vista Ready, and it costs $95. Zowie Batman, that's an expensive one. This is supposed to be the cheapest one, by the way. And you should be able to click on it and take us to the website. I have no idea if this looks anymore. I'm sure it's not. I'd be very surprised if this is actually still here. Oh, it, it's not the same one. That says it's a different one, doesn't it? Oh, well, maybe it is the same one. 775, LGA. Out of stock. Yeah, that is the same one, because it's the, the G33 the chipset. Yeah, and all that information, if you get it from Newegg. 104. Should, yeah, that's that way. Okay, so all that stuff is right here. Says what process CPU socket it's got. Said the front. Oh, this can't be the same one. Either that or you got the front side bus wrong too. Because right, FSB stands for front side bus. That's the speed of the bus. The so this one goes 1333. When you see 1333 slash 1066, those are the speeds it can go between. It's not both at the same time. So when I put memory in here, I'm either putting in 1333 or 1066, and this will sync up with whatever speed of the memory that I have. There's his chipsets that he, he listed. There's the kind of memory, DDR2-800, which doesn't make sense with that up there. So it takes eight gig, it does dual channel. Right here it says it's got a PCI-X16, three PCI-X1s, and three PCI slots. So he didn't copy that, or he or she, I don't know who this was anymore. Jim. Yeah, Jim. And then, Jim. And so we've got one so PATA slot and four awesome. SATA slots. It says with the onboard, all that information is listed on here. You just need to pull it off 
and put it on your separate slides so that it's easy to go through. Okay? I'll do you I'll do one more. Okay, so here's our office choice. Socket 7075, here's our compatible CPUs, and there's a list of all the compatible CPUs that goes with this socket right here. Memory information available for this one. It's got two DDR. Oh, didn't even give us how much. And that would be points off. Just because he said that it took memory, we don't know how much. Okay, oh, we did. What just happened? Okay, so it takes up to eight gigabytes of RAM, integrated components. He's listed all the integrated components there. You get the idea. I don't need to go through all this. No. Okay. So each one of them, you want to go and hit those items off of the rubric as you go through this. The rubric is right here. When you're doing your PowerPoint, you may want to refer to the rubric because when we grade your PowerPoint, we're going to be referring to the rubric. So introduction, presenter clearly introduces himself as well as the topic, company background, clear understanding of the Correct. background, geography, and financial stability of companies com conveyed. And I did say on there that I expected pictures of where they are. And then these are the things that we're expecting to hear about each one of the PCs. Integrated components, motherboard bus fees, compatible and max memory, compatible CPUs, expansion slots. That's the stuff you're going to look for when you go to buy one. Okay? So and then cost is a separate item down here. You have to have cost along with the link to where you got them. And then it talks down here about did you compare stuff? Did you do a citation down here? And then there's a PowerPoint elements down here at the, at the end, okay? So I would recommend looking at that while you do it. Okay, I've also got a link to, where's that one at? Where's the, to the NBC. Okay, let me show you an example of a different kind of PowerPoint as well. I thought I had it in there. Has anybody ever done a non-linear PowerPoint before? Uh, you want me to click on that at all? I must. I don't know where I put it. Wait, I won't worry about it now. I might do a video on that and show you that one later. Shut up. Got that for me. Huh. That was perfect. I thought I'd write on there. Okay, so um, what I wanted to talk about is some of the uh, port stuff that we started on yesterday and I didn't really get around to all of it. So you're not finishing the PowerPoint? No, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to keep going through more slides on, on different Add some big old You got the idea, right? Has everybody got the idea of the PowerPoint? Each one of them is just like that. That example PowerPoint is up there. If you want to take that one and save it and edit it and put in your own stuff, I don't care. Just so you may, but realize that wasn't 100%. Okay, it was probably a B power block. Does that mean you okay. have three RAM slots? Okay, this one, yeah, this is an older what? motherboard. Okay, what? I'm just going to go, has three RAM slots. What? They didn't used to have dual channels, so you could have it in every one. That's so good. It also has a CPU socket that's vertical. To it. it snapped in. Okay, so different kind of, uh, yeah, this is a Panini 3 motherboard. They didn't no, 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 necessarily no. go like that, so I'm like, <laughs> snap right in. Okay, so I just wanted to point out the slots and stuff that you guys are going to be looking at as you look at them. Here's a standard PCI slot that you guys will see on all yours. This is what the older ISA slots, if you find them on the board like that, it's probably a refurb. It's probably pretty old. And these are older AGP slots. The ones that you guys are going to be looking at are the ISA slots right now. The different kinds of slots, I kind of said it <coughs> sloppy, I think, last sloppy. class, so that's why I wanted to go over it again. PCI, there's PCIe, which stands for Express, and there's PCIx, which stands for Extended. Or Extreme. Okay? Really, of the ty types you're going to look at, you're going to look at the regular PCI, and then it says PCIe 16X, that means it's 16 times faster than the standard PCI. Holy crap. So this is a PCIe 1, it's a little bit longer for a 4, I should say 4, that's a bad picture, there we go, a 4, and that's a 16 and that's a 16. The longer ones for the video cards have little snappies on the end to hook the video cards into. I wanted to show you some pictures of those. So these are all PCI Express. 
the little tiny one's a one, the little bigger one's a four. I think this is a bad picture because I can't visually see the difference between an eight and a 16. I don't think they're any longer, but it'll say that in the description of the motherboard, okay? So this is just some, uh, I thought I took out all those lines. Okay, but you can say this is an 8X, this is a 16X, physically you can't see the difference, okay? They'll both run the video cards, one won't run them as fast, okay? This is a little thing showing you how fast information goes through the PCI. The X16 is twice as fast as the 8, which is twice as fast as the 4, which is twice as fast as the 2, which is twice as fast as the Get the idea. Okay? So it's kind of like CD-ROMs. You, know, you ever looked at a CD-ROM and it says 4X CD-ROM or 16X CD-ROM? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there was a base <laughs> speed of CD-ROMs a millennia ago back when the world was young and dirt was on the floor, okay? And then they made a faster one and they called it a 4X, which meant four times faster than the first one that came out. And then they made a 16X, which was 16, 16 times, times faster four than times the first faster. one that came out. So it's kind of the same thing. That's PCI 1, so 16 is 16 times faster, okay? So they just basically so when you guys look at motherboards, you should be able to at least pick out, okay, here's my video, this one has two, here's my standard PCI because they're almost always the same color, and then you kind of have to look if they're dark for the PCI X1. How many times have you that picture? I don't know. I like that picture. It's in my, my thing. You got a problem with that picture? Colorful. It is colorful. Okay. So when I'm going, let's talk about, let's pick a company that nobody's got. Biostar. Biostar, okay. So when I'm going to look for my stuff, there's some places to start. Here's my favorite place to buy stuff. I start at Price Watch. He did not call back, so does that mean it's working fine? No, he said you would call him back. Yeah. No, I didn't say I called back. I said call me back. The first one him. he didn't. The second, no, the second one I said I called him back, because that was totally unrelated to the first one. Well, you should still call it. Okay, so I go to PriceWatch.com. PriceWatch.com sells nothing. <laughs> it just watches it just prices. Shows it just you watches prices. prices. So it's a nice place to go, because if you're looking for your home one, and you're looking for the cheapie, that'd be a good place to start. For my business and my gamer one, I might want to just go to Newegg, because it has a really nice site. But, so I'm going to go down here to Motherboards, which is, which is Components Motherboards. Okay. Is the part where we have to be salespeople when this class counts for business credit? I don't know. Good. What? Well, I already have both. True that. This is a business credit. Okay, well, Miss Stewart doesn't have to graduate. Okay. Yo. So. 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 Maybe you're not going to graduate. You never take it. Okay, good. So, Biostar, I'm going to type Biostar in here, and I'm going to type LGA in here. You know, I'm going to hit enter. Music appreciation or history? Shh! I'm trying to show you something. Somebody pay okay. attention, yeah. Cody, or I'm moving you over to table number five by yourself. Oh, okay. Shoot. okay, so the cheapest Biostar one, I did a search for Biostar and the word LGA together. So the cheapest Biostar one I can find here is right here. Biostar LGA 1155 motherboard. So let's look at it. This one is obviously for who? Double. Okay. Oh, no, I wasn't saying that. It's oh. the same for the blue In table. Because okay. it's an Intel slot. So let's see if it fits. Look, pay it. Hey, Cody, seriously. Shush. Let's see if it fits. Let's see if it fits for either one of our ones, okay? So I know it's an LGA 775, so this is only going to work for the person that's doing the Intel chip. That's 1155. 1155, what did I say? 775. Oh, okay. So what does it have? It's As far as slots, it's got one PCI Express 16. So would this work for a gamer? No. no. Okay? It's got one PCI, oh wow, this didn't have a lot of expansion slots, but nothing said it had to. It's got four SATA ports. It's got an integrated audio, video, and LAN. So I've got everything I need for a home PC for $44.90 right now. Select the options you want. I don't want any of those <coughs> options. Wow, this is a very low information site. However, I've already got the information on this, so if I wanted to just find out more about this, Google. I would copy that and Google it. And Google it. Now I should go to the Biostar site. I'm going to get the most information at the Biostar site. So when it comes up here, ah, ah, oh. fantastic! 
That's so tricky. Always gets me at that Google. That was you. so cool. Okay, so now I'm at the Biostar site, which is really where I'm going to get the majority of my information. Don't just go with the sales site. Go to the manufacturer site when you find the thing on sale. Because it's going to tell me way more information. So, wow, how am I going that fast? Okay, so the chip says, it tells me all the CPU. Here's the whole list of CPUs that I can fit in it. Here's how much memory. It only holds, oh, holds up to 16 gig of RAM. Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, it's got, again, only two expansion slots. You can, wow, though. that's kind of stinky. But it's also $44, and it's at a low end of cost. It's got four SATA, four USBs. Yes! I told you, I told you had like 30 seconds. Okay, so... Uh,